Matt Jesus on a pilgrimage, still walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. Heavenly Father, I beseech you to see before you this morning a sinner of your own redeeming, a, a, a lamb of your own flock, a sheep of your own fold. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This week, as I thought uh, a little bit about our time together this morning, as I thought about what I would say to you, and of course, in the midst of our uh, All Hallows' Eve, uh, Halloween, All Saints' Day, uh, the words that came to me actually are from a poem by Seamus... um, Heaney called the curate Troy, but I, I thought they fit in a rather particular way. Believe, he wrote, in the farther shore. Believe in the farther shore and that it is reachable from here. Believe in miracles and cures and healing well. This last week, we've had kind of these three days, All Hallows' Eve, uh, All Hallows, or All Saints' Day, and then the Day of the Faithful Departed, sometimes celebrated in Mexico as the Day of the Dead, and perhaps you and from your own culture have different ways uh, throughout the year of remembering those who have gone before us. You might think of these days in the, in the way as... as the people, those gathered glories of Jesus' wounded love, those who have been gathered in by God. The witness, says poet Malcolm Guide, the witness of the ones we shunned and shamed, plain in our sight and far beyond our seeing. God weaves them with us in the web of being. They stand beside us even as we grieve. The lone and left behind whom no one claimed the unnumbered multitudes he lifts above, the shadow of the gibbet and the grave to triumph where all saints are known and named, the gathered glories of his wounded love. Today we gather uh, all of our thoughts about God's saving power, our loved ones that we see no longer, and the hope of a future ashore that awaits us on a on a distant and foreign land. And we might ask, in our particular context, what does this say about what we face this afternoon, tomorrow, the next week, the months to come? These hallowed days of saints and sinners is a time to remember fondly, for sure, those that we love but have gone before us. And so you all here at Epiphany do that, right? You read the names of those who are, are, have gone before you, the names of those in your columbarium, the names of those that aren't written literally into the fabric and the stones and the walls of this place, and you name them. You did that this morning, and we'll do so again at Evensong. It's a time to remember them fun. Certainly, that is true. A time to name, in particular, the saints that inspire us and the family members, the faithful departed, who of great faith, or even our friends who have extended connections who brought us to where we are today, that have been involved in our lives, who have had an impact upon us, those perhaps like my grandmother or others who helped to form my faith, quite literally, for what it is today. We give thanks for their gifts to us. We give thanks for their lives, for those spiritual gifts, but also the acts of kindness and faith. Um, Sometime you'll have to ask me about how my grandmother let me eat old chocolate uh, pie. Uh, But that was just a sign of poor judgment on her part and her deep kindness, her deep kindness and love. So today is a day of remembering. It is a day of gratitude, but it's also, and I think this is important, it's a day of inspiration. It's a day of inspiration. It's a day when we hold up the very best qualities of those who've gone before us, whether they're great saints 
or people like our uncles and our aunts, people who have inspired us. It's a day of imagining that you and I may be like them, that we have inherited a life that is to be lived out from their very best qualities. Now, you and I both know they were all saints, but also sinners, right? Just like us. But we are to live out their very best. So we consider these beloved of God, our beloved, the ones we name and hold up, whether it be a saint or a family member, a friend, and we think of their very best qualities, but not just any quality not just any quality they may have. We think about particular qualities because we're Christians. So there are qualities of Christianity that they hold up that we might call virtues. They sometimes made great and wise decisions because they sat with it for a while and they learned from the past and they knew their history and they knew their stories and so with prudence they faced their future and present. They were fair to people. That doesn't always mean they were nice, but they were fair. They were fair. That's called justice. They were fair. They had a balance life, some of that deeply woven because of their own hardships, because indeed they had hard lives, many of them. Joanne and I were talking last night about the formation of her parents and my parents and grandparents who came out of two world wars, who came out of a, a lack of food, who when, when war broke out they were taught to plant gardens and save the food as rations, to have a balanced life all the time, to have courage and what I would call stick with itness. That means a courage that lasts, that says that you and I can face any problem as decent human beings with courage, knowing that typically we're the ones who are part of the problem. And we can face it and fix it. Together, together. Faith in God, a power greater than ourselves. Now, you and I both know that's true. That if we had the faith of our grandparents and everything they accomplished today, we would not fear tomorrow because they didn't have any time for that fear. They had to live in the midst of the hard world they lived in and they had faith that God was going to draw them to that future shore, whether, uh, no matter what happened, that the evil of this world would not have the last word. They had faith that their Redeemer lived, as we say in the funeral service, and that God would draw them closer. They had so much faith that they had hope. They had hope in the future because they believe that together, working together, it could be better than it was today. That gets to that depth of courage and stick with itness and faith. And finally, there was charity, kindness, a giving out of gratitude with no strings attached. Gratitude first, then the gift. Gratitude for having survived. Gratitude for having put food on the table when there was barely enough money to eat. Gratitude that they had made it another day. Gratitude for the job they did have, even if it wasn't the job they wanted. <laughs> Belief that if they worked hard, they could move forward in life. Now, I would add this. It's not typically one of the virtues, but I would add beauty. When I think of the saints I love, they add beauty to the world. They said, look at that, my great-grandmother. Look at this. She was a gardener. Look at this flower. Look at this fish in the pond. Look at how beautiful this is. Look at God's beauty here. 
So we remember the saints, the faithfully departed, and we remember their best virtues and qualities. But there is a third thing, and that is this. Hope fails when we have a false understanding of the past, a nostalgic version of the history that is behind us. When we think there was some glorious past. I hate to tell you this, but there was no glorious past. I don't care who tells you there was, there wasn't. Sin possesses this world, as does brokenness and evil. So do not think for a second there has been some glorious moment of the past. For that is a lie. To remember the saints and our faithful to depart it is to remember them, remember them as they are truly. And the very real context in which they live, their very real sacrifices to bring us into life and to provide for us and gave themselves so that we might have a day in our own lives. Today, you and I live in difficult times. Our hope is not only received in believing there is some yonder shore, yet I want to hasten to say that our hope is not some kind of escapism, nor is it either to recreate a past out of naivete. Our hope lies in the reality that no matter how bad things get tomorrow, next week, or in the months and years to come, we believe that terror and conflict and war and hatred are the brokenness of this world. They are not things that have to be. They are things that we make. Or even that hard work and the difficulty to achieve success is somehow unique to us in this generation. We believe these will not have the last word, and that means you and I must act, which is the third piece. We believe that God is at work in this world even now, and that as we aspire to the virtues of the saints and faithfully departed, that we are in fact participating in our own way in God's goodness and light in the world. It's not going to happen without you. It's not going to happen without your work. You are the ones that make up Christ, as our colleague said, mystical body to bring about light and love in this world rather than darkness and pain and suffering. So yes, let us remember our favorite saints today who did something, who acted differently than the world expected them to. Yes, they were sinners, but they, out of charity, gave love and kindness and of them their own selves to act in the world, to bring light and love. Let us remember the faithful departed, and let us remember, finally, our opportunity to bring light and life into a world that is so desperate for these virtues, so desperate to believe that what is before us is not all there is. Let us make a clarion call on All Saints Day that the saints have not died, but they live in this generation still, and that you can see them in this world as they live and as they act, as they move. Let us point them out. Let us raise them up. Let us be grateful for their examples and say, look at what that person did. And let us then rejoice and join the great throng on All Saints Day and All Hallows Eve as we head towards that yonder shore that awaits us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter at Texas Bishop and spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you.